Mountain West basketball on Ruth Sports is brought to you by Connect for Health Colorado. You might not think you need health insurance. We all do. Get yours today at connectforhealthcolorado.com. And by Union Wireless, home of the contract buyout. Get paid to switch carriers. Union Wireless treating you like a neighbor, not a number. In Logan, Utah, where the Aggies are 7-1 and one this year. They have a 29-26 lead over Wyoming as we get set to begin the second half. And moments ago, Jenny Kavnar caught up with Jeremy Shiat, one of the assistant coaches for Larry Shiat. Jeremy, that buzzer shot by Grable had to give you guys the lift. What was kind of the message at halftime to get you back into this? Well, that's the value of having seniors. They've been in situations like that before. Riley knew there was a second on the clock, and thank God it went in. You know, I think until about the last four minutes, Jenny, I think we did a pretty good job of locating the three-point shooters. To me, the biggest uh, glaring weaknesses from an offensive standpoint was obviously turnovers. Whether they were in man or zone, we didn't do a very good job of taking care of it. And from a defensive standpoint, we got to do a better job getting in transition. You know, they got a lot of easies just because they beat us down the floor. All right, Jeremy, thanks so much. Well, he summed it up pretty well. Like father, like son, huh? That apple did fall far, far from the tree. When I first met Larry Scheid and his associate head coach, Scott Duncan, they were assistant coaches at New Mexico, and his son uh, was a ball boy there. <laughs> so that goes a few years back. Not sure you can graduate from ball boy to assistant coach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Normal path. Back to our cut. Oh. Smith, reverse layup, and he makes it. <laughs> A great first play drawn up at halftime by Stu Morrill, the master of set plays, and then a great finish by Smith. He, he truly is one of the great X's and O's oh, guys in college basketball. Their half-court execution, when he had returning players, was just, I mean, it, it was like painting by the numbers. They were so, so efficient. Oh, Remember, basketball. four new starters this year. This is the first play out of, Halftime, that was a, ter a terrific finish, but that was a nice play set up by Steve Morris. Your lover of baseball, he was like a good infielder scooping that up. That was good hands that by Smith. Hand. Five Turn second violation. Well, Wyoming, who finished the first half in a big way, getting off to a tough start here. Uh, to start the second half, Wyoming one for six from the three-point line of the first six and then hit three of six. Kind of got themselves back in the game from the three-point line. They go to Colette again. That's how they started the game. Colette converts. He's got a dozen. And it is a seven-point lead for Utah State a minute into the second half. Colette had 24 points against UNLV, against one of the longest probably athletic front lines in the league, so he's feeling pretty good about things right now. They get the ball to Nance, Colette on him. And that pass, this connection with Derek Cook. And Larry Shiat wants a full timeout. Just a minute 18 into the second half. Utah State with the first two buckets of the second half. Utah State leading by seven. Well, they found their uh, Union Wireless Impact player in the first half, early in the second half. Jalen Moore, watch this, Colette, he's gonna post up in the middle of the paint. That's what's called a duck-in move by a post player. When your post defender is level or lower than you, you see Cook gives a little help and gets himself level, and Colette with a great duck-in move and a nice pass by the 6'8 sophomore Jalen Moore. Moore has one three-pointer, but he can score points in bunches. You don't have to run sets for him. You need to have an impact offensively, number 14 in white. Well, he creates opportunities for himself because he plays so hard. He runs the court, he rebounds it, and he creates his own offense. Perkins, a uh, little step-away jumper. Collette thought it should be Utah State basketball. And the underneath official, Sean Lehigh, had a better view of it, and he changed the call. So it will stay with Stu Morrill's club. Two long athletes and Cook and Collette going after it down there. Cook not near the scorer, scorer that Collette is, but a good defender, good rebounder. 
the Aggies playing four out around one. Collette coming out, setting a lot of ball screens to an open post there. There's Cook, Anderson. No call, no whistle. Larry Shia can't believe it. And I was just getting ready to say that's where Collette kind of hurts himself on silly fouls and he got away with one. And now at the other end, a foul on Cook as he and Collette were battling for position. Let's see if that, that's a foul. That, that's a foul with the body and maybe with the arm. Yeah, yeah I, I, they, ju they just missed one. He got away with one there. Then at the other end, Collette again on that power duck in move on Cook. That's Julian Perry, his first bucket. That's huge. That's a five point swing, yeah. maybe a six point no swing. No question. No question. Julian Perry, a kid who only averages a little under six, but just like the rest of these four newcomers, that starting five just keeps getting better as the season goes on. 10 point lead. And that three way off the mark for Adams. It comes to Colette. It's been one shot and out most of the night for Wyoming yes, as has. well. Yes, it has. And that is due to uh, the Aggies' increased rebounding prowess. So we talked about that has been an Achilles heel all year for them, coming off a very good rebounding game, out rebounding the running Rebels. McManaman back in there, and it's a block on McManaman. Cowboys are having trouble guarding the Aggies at half court off of those ball screens. The Aggies uh, spacing, they're playing four guys around Collette, letting Collette come out and screen on the ball, and then that lane is wide open for his role. Once again, Stu Morrow, master at the offensive end of execution. Collette crossover, and he missed the layup. That was going to be a little set play, a little handoff there. Colette, what a terrific crossover for a guy 6'8". That's the guy you want to find right now. They need a bucket. 7-0 run for Utah State. Adams. He passed up a shot. Yes, he did. Can't pass up this one. He's only got seven to shoot it. And a whistle. Cowboys got bailed out then. I thought they passed up a couple shots. They've got to try to get Larry Nance Jr. the ball down on the low block. They're getting it to him in that little half post area. And the Aggies are doing a pretty good job then of not double teaming him, making him throw it out and then closing to the shooters. They need to get him a back to the basket turn. Well, it's interesting. Both these schools, particularly Wyoming, that's going to be a turnover. They don't foul much. The two teams that play really good defense. No, they, they don't. In fact, uh, Wyoming second in the nation in the least number of fouls per game. They're, they're very untypically turning the ball over quite a bit tonight, though. They've been so stout on the road, but they're down 10. 15.45 to go in the second half. Smith got a good look in the rebound off that Allen Herndon. Adams trying to create himself. And that was blocked by Colette. And he looked to the outside official because he thought he was fouled. Step away, Perkins is good. Perkins with four, he averages 10 a game. After it that, is a 12-point Aggie lead. After that made basket, Stu Moore immediately jumps up, holds up two fists. That's the sign for his zone defense. The Aggies typically this year have been man-to-man -man on misses, zones on make. Really gives you a different look each and every possession. Nance back to a cut, and Herndon throws it down. Second time we've seen the uh, nice high-low pass from Nance the outstanding is a, yeah, Nance, senior Nance. Nance is not just a great passer. He's got a great feel for passing. He knows where to look, and the timing of that pass takes somebody that has a really good feel for the game. Wait for the basketball. Wyoming gets taken in. That'll be on Adams. Ten-point lead, Utah State.
Cowboy fans, remember to buckle up every trip, every time. Click it or ticket. 9-2, Utah State has uh, won the second half so far, and they're up by 10. Wyoming leads the Mountain West shooting the basketball 49%, but not tonight. They're in the 30s, Joe. Is it uh, bad shot selection, good defense, or shots just not falling? I, I think they've missed some that normally they hit, but terrific Aggie defense. Remember, Aggies are number two in the Mountain West Conference in defensive field goal percentage at 38%, and so they're holding Wyoming to 37.5. That's about normal for them. They're also number one in defending the three-point line, and they're holding the Cowboys to 30% in, uh, in three-point shooting. Utah stayed with it, more hands off to Perkins. Gorski's come on the floor for Wyoming. As Larry Shyatt's looking for somebody who can hit a shot, and Utah State turns it over. We were talking about it at the break. Uh, Josh Adams really having a tough night. One for six, 0 for three from three-point line, and five of Wyoming's 10 turnovers. He's on the bench right now. He likes this uh, court last year in a loss in Logan. He had 21. Well, they need uh, either Gravo or Adams to get going. And they need Nance to do what he normally does in the missed the point blank range there. Well, I just said they missed some that they normally hit. Not a bunch, you know, three or four. And that's one of them. That's about all it takes. Moore, we haven't seen him shoot it in a while, and there might have been some rust on his offensive game. Well, that was very good defense by the freshman, Allen Harrington. Had a hand up on the catch, high hands on the shot. Harrington, 6'9". Jalen Moore, maybe not a great shot, but very good defense by the freshman for the Cowboys. Shot clock down to single digits again. Grabo. And he knocks down a triple. Big shot for Riley Grabo, his third triple of the night. Great release, great footwork by Grabo. Kid, it only averages eight points. One of the top three point shooters, though, in Wyoming history. He doesn't shoot a lot, but boy, that was a picture perfect catch and shot. He's basketball to paint and a foul as. Elston Jones was going up. Watch Grabo come off this little flare screen or this little pick and pop. And boy, it just takes him a second to get that off. Talk about guys who have great releases. It's not because how quick they move the arm, it's from the waist down. And that was perfect. There you see 139 three point he, baskets made, none of them as long as the one he made right before no, halftime. No, and, he, and he's closing in on one of the most celebrated graded players in the history of Wyoming basketball, Fennis Dembo. He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated yeah. back in the 80s. Along with Benny Dees, the guy who just oh. took over for uh, Jim Brandenburg, who had left to go to San Diego State. What a good coach and what a character Benny Dees still is. He still is a character, absolutely right. I saw him in the stands at Wyoming a year or so ago, and I said, I thought you died. He said, I've been resurrected. Yeah, Denbo played with Eric Lechner, a couple guys who played in the NBA. McManaman out of the corner, no go, and a loose basketball grab by Smith. Good decision by Smith. JoJo McGlaston, and a rebound plucked down by Nance. Seven point Utah State lead and on the floor, obviously the dunk was missed, but it would not have counted. Nance was fouled on the floor. Boy, that was pretty impressive. Watch this explosive little hesitation move there. Pretty good for a guy who had ACL reconstruction wow. uh, yes. a little less than a year ago. Yes. He worked awfully, awfully hard to, to rehabilitate that knee. Well, that was impressive, even though he came away with no points. Well, he had it pinned down. Well, you got to get him the ball there. Graybo, who's a great point guard. Nance had Colette pinned under the hoop, yeah, and they did. didn't get him the ball, he Coach. Did. Never pass.
Atlantic with Wyoming. They played so many close games this year. And they turned it over there. Well, they've run that sealed double along the low block area there for Grable a couple times, trying to spring him to get him a shot. The Aggies are really on point defensively. If you want to see how good they are, watch them away from the ball. Wyoming now back in their zone defense, a 1-1-3. It ends up being a 2-3. But watch the Aggies away from the ball. Great stance, great vision on the ball. They're really, really playing well at the defensive end. Jalen Moore with his second bucket of the game. He's got five. And the lead back to nine for Utah State. 11 and a half left in regulation. Jalen Moore kind of has a habit of getting going late in games. He's has 17 straight double-digit scoring games, but he has really upped his game in the last five minutes of the last three or four games. Gorski out of the corner. Three's just not going down for Wyoming. Here's Bolt. Pass in by Moore. You said it earlier, just hard work. Doing something hard to get something easy, just running the court, following what was, could have been a sure layup. A lot of guys would have laid back, creating his own offense. Jalen Moore on the wing of that 2-3 matchup zone with those long arms makes it really tough. Larry Nance on that possession never touched the basketball. 42-31, 11-point Utah State lead. There's, there's a little bit of reason Wyoming has taken uh, three straight threes, three straight contested threes. They're having a hard time creating any kind of other shot. Four, a three, no go. Raybo down the lane, and he drew contact. Then he had to uh, avoid getting stepped on by Colette. Aggies by 11. Utah State leading 42-31. It was a three-point game at halftime. The Cowboys have only two field goals in the second half. Nothing from Larry Nance Jr., one of the uh, leading candidates for Player of the Year in the conference. Riley Grabo is going to go to the line. That's good news for Larry Shire. Well, Riley Grabo, the nation's leading free throw shooter at 95%, has only missed three free throws all year, 54 of 57. Also, the number one shooter in Wyoming basketball history, a career 87% shooter. But how about this, Drew? Only one free throw attempt for the Cowboys before this one. Only five for Utah State. I'd say they're letting them play, I guess. Yeah, I want to see Jenny pick on uh, Grable. <laughs> Grable. Play, go play pig with Grable. Play a little horse, yeah. Oh, wow. my God. You know what? We brag on the guy, and he just missed his fourth what? free throw wow. all year. God and you know what? That wasn't even close. No, that was a bad shot. That missed a wide right, so to speak. He made the uh, correction. Ten in the game for Graybo. And that is the deficit for Wyoming. 17 and 3. Just one loss in conference play all year. Wyoming extending their defense there to a 2 2 1. Now back in straight man to man defense. There's a three ball that doesn't go for Perry. And Wyoming gets it. Only three teams have beaten Wyoming this year. San Diego State conference play. Cal out of the Pac-12 and SMU, Larry Brown's Mustangs. And they had the last shot at Cal either to, to tie or send it uh, or to win it. And Larry Nance Jr. wasn't able to hit them in their last possession. That's a tough pass by Hankerson. He got it back. Again, the shot clock winding down, single digits. Adams gonna have to create himself. He just, he's not playing with confidence. He would, he would never give that up. He would give that up, Coach, with four seconds on the shot clock. Oh, he's really struggling tonight. Turned over, can't find it. I thought he was trying to do a little too much early on, 
Uh, I thought he passed up some pull-up jump shots trying to get it all the way to the basket, but he has really, really struggled. Just one of six from the floor. Perry drives, finds the Glasgow. Good find to collect. Jojo, 14 for Colette, leading score in the game. 44-32, back up by 12 for Utah State. Nice pass by McGlast and getting to the paint. That great athleticism, he got up over the defense and dropped that one right on Colette. Nance waits till traffic clears and he finally has a bucket in the second half with 8.20 to go. I think that's his only second shot of this half. A dozen for Larry Nance Jr. And a near steal by Adams. And then he tapped it from behind and a late call. That was on the fourth Josh Adams. His second, fifth, fifth now. Sean Harris now in. Sean Four, Harris three, on the floor. Jalen Moore will step out for, uh, I guarantee, just a moment or two. Five team fouls on Wyoming. Three team fouls on Utah State. Sean Harris, uh, Jenny's pig mate out there in their shooting contest. He's the first big sub off the bench. And he comes in and plays maybe a couple minutes and gives Collette or more just a, a short, short breather. 7.54 left as we step aside. Utah State trying to hand Wyoming just their second conference loss all year. 7.54 to go in Logan, Utah. Utah State with a 10-point lead over Wyoming. How about news around college basketball? Congratulations to head coach Mike Krzyzewski from Duke. His 1,000th win for Krzyzewski. 77-68 to 68 victory over St. John's. That happened just a few days ago. When you take a look, he is the lone leader in the Century Club for Division I men's basketball coaches at 1,000. On the list of over 600 wins, though, is Utah State's head coach Stu Morrill. 613 wins. Of course, this will be his final season. Announced his retirement at the end of the 2014-15 season. You know, I did talk to Larry Shiat a bit, though, about Coach Krzyzewski and getting that 1,000 win. Of course, Shiat was at Clemson as a head coach, played against Duke in the ACC. He said, you know what? I helped him out a bunch. 11 wins. Hey, you know what, Jenny? He's not alone. <laughs> uh, there's a whole lot of folks that... Uh, have lost to Duke through the years. And of course, uh, Coach K got his start at West Point. And what was interesting, number two on that list is Jim Behan, Syracuse, their best friends. And Syracuse took out an ad in the student paper, Duke student paper, a full page ad congratulating Coach K. There's your horse partner, Sean Harris, making an impact with a stick back. You know, Jenny, that was that shot that you threw up, that putback shot that you almost got a letter on him there. I, I'm not sure uh, if that's fair, you doing that pregame prep with him. I'm glad he made it in the game, because he didn't make it against me in pitch. <laughs> well, everything going right for the Aggies. Right? Yeah, and there's another turnover. But here's where, where the style of play hurts Wyoming. They're unaccustomed to, to having this kind of deficit of now 14 with a little less than seven minutes to go. They're not a team that plays up tempo and gets early offense. No, no. They're, a, they're a hard team to play from behind. Larry Nance only two field goals this half. And they just can't get him the ball, it doesn't seem like, in, in the paint. I mean, everything offensively has been around the perimeter, 23, 24, 25 feet from the bucket. Adams gets bumped. That'll be a fourth foul team-wise on Utah State. Perry picks it up. That's his third. Nice read by Darius Perkins, the junior college point guard. Gray Bolt hitting headlong into the ball screen. No help on that ball screen going under, and a really nice pull-up by Perkins, who you said is really playing well here in the last, this is his fourth game, last three games, he's averaged over 13 points and really shooting it well from the three-point line, 9-13. Good 
Gorski draws a crowd and a little jump hook. Nice uh, shot from Alex Gorski. He's got eight off the bench for Wyoming. This Wyoming team, in seven games, their bench had supplied them just 33 points in conference play. Well, we've so been all about yeah. their starters. Gorski has had could really help him. I talked about he him missing so much of the early season with that broken finger. That's offensive. Smith ran into uh, is that uh, Cook who drew the foul. That's one of the few times you'll see Chris Smith get out of control. He normally, I, I keep saying, he's one of the most quietly effective players uh, in the Mountain West Conference. You almost don't notice him, yet he gets, he's averaging double figures, he's shooting 46% from three, but he very rarely makes turnovers or gets out of control. The Aggies staying with their matchup zone that is giving Wyoming all kinds of trouble. Ten on the shot clock. Nance finds Gorski and he gets taken away. And Grabo beats the buzzer by about two seconds and he drops in a three. And it's back down to single digits. Big shot from Riley Grabo. Right place at the right time. They've got to get some stops now. Fourth triple of the night for Grabo. Look for the Aggies to stay in that zone defense. That that was just a again a right place at the right time. They haven't given up much in that two-three matchup. Pull up for Perry, air ball, but it goes off of Grabo. Grabo picked this one up off the, the ground with a very short shot clock here. Rise right up to his shot. Great little pass fake there. Freeze the feet. That's what he did there, the defender. 48-39, Utah State. Well, now they go up the floor with a chance to cut it to seven, maybe six. That's the same shot, Derek. Uh, that uh, Darius Perkins hit off the ball screen last time. Cook really late getting out to kind of hard show, as coaches would call on that. Nance gets a good look, and he makes it. A seven-point game, 48-41. Larry Nance, Jr. Tough shot. That was pretty good defense by David Collette. High hand right up in his grill, and Nance rolls right up in the rhythm, knocks it down. They need to get him the ball more often, obviously. A uh, bumping foul. That's on Hankerson. Stoppage in play. Wyoming on a 7-0 run, back in contact with Utah State. to play Utah State in front of a big crowd at the Spectrum in Logan, leading Wyoming by seven. They've out-rebounded the Cowboys, they've outshot the Cowboys, and they've forced an uncharacteristic 13 turnovers from Wyoming as well. Well, we kind of look at Wyoming like, why aren't they shooting better? I tell you, it has an awful lot to do with the Aggie defense. They are really on point, really attentive. Hardly any uncontested shot by Wyoming. Nothing easy. Really having a hard time getting the ball to Nance in the post. I think a lot of credit has to go to the Aggies. Remaining on the floor for Wyoming's Alex Gorski. Adams had a tough night shooting it. Gorski has shot it well, so he's getting Crunch time minutes with Wyoming trailing by seven. Again, they're six and one, leading the Mountain West Conference. Utah State's four and three. Big possession here. They end that 7-0 run. And Jalen Moore with a runner no go. And Grabo comes down with a loose basketball. The Utah State turned away. Three and a half left. Drew, you and I predicted that this wouldn't get out of the 50s, and I don't think there's much of a chance with 320 to go that either team's going to get the 60. Nance misses McLaston with a weak side board. 
Once again, good defense by the Aggies coming to double that. Collette guarding Larry Nance Jr. Jalen Moore coming to double it. Moore or uh, Larry Nance having to shoot a turnaround jump shot out of that double team. A very high degree of difficulty to make that one go in. Again, credit the Aggies defense. To go 17 and three, you gotta win close games. A year ago, a lot of close losses for Larry Shiat's team. This year, in games decided by single digit, they're eight and two. They're in a single digit game right now, down by seven. Utah State's led most of the way. College Hoop fans, don't miss this weekend's Mountain West doubleheader. Cowboys back in action, they'll host Nevada at the uh, Dome of Doom up in Laramie. And then San Jose State will be at the pit, taking on the Lobos. Coverage begins at four this Saturday on route. You're down in, uh, in Albuquerque, right? I am down there for the Lobos and the Spartans. The Spartans having an awfully, awfully hard time this year with uh, suspensions and injuries. And boy, just uh, as I always say, kind of buzzards luck for the Spartans this year. Not much fun is being had in San Jose. Scoring drought of four minutes right now for Utah State. They were up 14. Smith, a good look. And he got the roll. Chris Smith with 14. Huge bucket for the Aggies. Well, the first option on that play was to go inside the Colette. Larry Nance Jr., great post defense, and then Smith coming up off a double staggered screen away, and what a velvet touch that was. That thing hit every part of the rim before it fell in. Now the clock is a factor. Inside 2.20 to play. Wyoming can't take four, uh, 30 seconds every possession. Nance misses. Grabo has it. And Grabo cannot hit from three-point range. One of the very few offensive rebounds Wyoming has gotten tonight. I think that is only their fifth offensive rebound. And as we talked about early, the Aggies, that's been their Achilles heel all year. Well, uh, Utah State may go to Patriot ball right now. Patriot ball? Yeah, take the air out of it. Oh, okay, okay. You, bet, you were hoping to spring that one on me, weren't well, you? Well, you know what? We had to work that in. Here's Colette. And that may do it for the Aggies. 12-point lead again. David Colette's got 16. Derek Cook just has had a hard time all night defending that duck-in that I talked about with Colette. Colette has really gotten it going on the low block. Aggies up 12 with a minute and a half. I don't know if the Wyoming Cowboys can pull off yet another miracle after coming off an overtime win and a three overtime win in their last two. Hard to win on the road. Hard to win on the road in the Mountain West Conference. And I, in this final season of Stu Morrow, have to reiterate a stat we always run out there when we're in Logan. Stu Morrow, in conference games since he took over 17 years ago, 118 and 19 here at the Spectrum. That's unbelievable. 613 wins, and much like Larry Scheidt said about Coach K's 1,000, I contributed a few times to through 613 wins. But what I'm amazed at, I've had, I think this is my fifth game now of the Aggies. I had them real early in the non-conference, and just as you knew they would, with four new starters, only four returning players, they have gotten better and better and better. They, they had some uh, real rebounding problems. Now they're going to end up out-rebounding their last two Mountain West Conference opponents. Again, you give that guy enough time with the team, he's going to get them where they need to go. And a difficult one. He, he, he spent a lot of time talking to the media about this yesterday. This was difficult because they felt like they had a tragic loss in Vegas. No question. They were up five with 43 seconds left. Chris Jones, the assistant, uh, took me through what happened. I mean, it, it was a perfect storm. It was unbelievable how they ended up losing that game. You got to get shots up right yeah. now. 
And Grabo tried to split a double team, but Glasgow came up with it. Well, going into that timeout, Perkins gathered his team at half court, and you could see he was just saying, we are not going to lose this one. And boy, they came out with great energy on that last defensive possession. Good balance for the starters for Utah State. Collette, another really good ball game. He had 24 against Vegas. He had that, you know, tough foul late. Kind of a mental lapse, but he's got 16 tonight. Perkins misses. 14 for Chris Smith, who he's a quiet assassin. Isn't Boy, he, he really is. He gets a lot done. Never One minute. Expression. One minute remaining. Cook followed up twice. And it goes out of bounds off the of Smith. 54 seconds left. Wyoming's going to lose for just the second time in conference play. You know, as good as they are defensively, and as great as, as Nance is, you need Adams and this guy, Hankerson, to contribute offensively, and normally they do, but they just had, both of them had off nights offensively for Wyoming. Well, Adams has just had a nightmarish night. He, he was averaging 12 coming into this, but he was averaging almost 16 in the Mountain West Conference play, and he has just not been able to find the range. He's just, again, had a nightmare type performance tonight for him. And Hankerson's been shut out, and that's kind of emblematic of his evening. He's 0 for 5. And uh, off camera, he's covering his face with his jersey. It's one of those nights. Hankerson, 10th in the Senior. Mountain West Conference in three-point shooting, hasn't made Senior. one now in the last two games. It's still about Georgia putting it in the hoop. Uh, you know what? You can X know all you want. When the ball goes in, you feel pretty good, and you look pretty good if you're a coach. And when it doesn't, you don't look so good. You don't look so good. <laughs> and you don't feel so good. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. They chartered in here, Wyoming. He'll fly from Logan back to uh, Laramie. It's straight shot east of here. He's driving it. It's about six, six and a half hours. With no snow. With no snow and, and no wind. It and could be two or three lot, days. Of, snow. Yeah, there's a whole lot of wind in western Wyoming. Grabo hits Grable. his fifth three-pointer. And a timeout. 37 seconds left, 54-44. There's a game that's uh, going to start in about 10 minutes or so up in Boise, Idaho. That'll be interesting also. Boise State's playing better and Colorado State's visiting. Well, Boise State's another team having to overcome some injuries. And they are playing good basketball right now. Well, time for the clutch player, brought to you by Mako. There for you in the clutch, visit Mako.com to find a center near you. And David Colette with a steal right before the end of the first half and a dunk. And they found him on the low block early in both halves to kind of set the tone. Well, what he's done has become more consistent. Remember, start a freshman record, and he's very, a set his freshman record with 22 points in his opening game against Weber State here, and then everyone expected that every game. He hadn't played in two years, hadn't practiced in two years, but boy, he is on the come uh, here of late. The blasted, got the roll. Once again, Stu Moore knowing that Wyoming was going to come out with hard pressure running that home run play and coming up with it in a big way. Yeah, Wyoming's going to back off now with just 15 seconds left. What a convincing win for Utah State. And maybe their best W of the year. This may be their best W since they've been in the Mountain West Conference. Remember, only their second year here. Stu Morrill's taken them through three different conferences for the 17 years here. And you know, Larry Cheyenne whispered something about what a great career Steve Walls had. Great respect between those two men. Congrats to the Aggies, 56-44. They played a very solid 44, excuse me, 40 minutes on both ends of the floor. Two very good coaches and two very, very fine gentlemen and rep great representatives of college.